Hi, welcome back to the library. After reading Bob and Otto, I started wondering if Bob was based on a real butterfly. So I did a little bit of research and I found this clouded yellow butterfly and doesn't he look a lot like Bob? So it's not for sure, but possibly he could be a clouded yellow butterfly. I thought that was kind of cool and that I would share that with you. But onwards, now it's time to draw. Let's draw Bob and Otto. We might as well do Bob as a butterfly because that's kind of cool. And since we're trying to fit them both on the paper, it's good to kind of plan out how they'll fit to make sure that they all fit on the page. So you don't want Bob to be so tiny you can't get all these cool details in. But you don't want him to be so huge that you can't get Otto in. So I'm just going to lightly draw a circle just to place where I think I want him. I think I'm going to have him a little to the right of center. So maybe about like this. Remember, draw your super lightly when you're putting it down. And that gives me room for grass underneath and maybe Otto will be right there. That works for me. So you can kind of plan it out ahead of time. And remember, do it really lightly so you can erase. Okay, when we look at Bob as a butterfly, most of his space is taken up with his wings. So we're gonna look at our circle, and you can see it's almost like a triangle that's not straight. It's kind of on the diagonal. So I'm gonna go in my oval, make a little diagonal line here, and figure that he's going to fit his wings, basically, and do this lightly, kind of like, basically like that. And we're going to do this lightly because that's not exactly how we're going to draw his wings, but it gives us an idea. Okay, if you turn this this way, you can see his lower wing is kind of shaped like a rounded raindrop, almost like a sunflower seed. So we can do that in our wing space. So see how my edge is real sharp? seems to be that I need to make it a little bit more rounded. So now that I'm actually planning the wing specifically, and you don't go all the way to the top because there's a top wing. Come around, curve like this. That looks a lot like the bottom wing, and I'll get rid of this line. There we go. It might be a little skinnier than this one, so maybe I want to make it a little wider, or maybe I like it a little skinnier. I'm going to correct mine, just so it's a little bit closer to how the artist drew it. Okay, that works for me. Now I'm going to turn it back up so we can see it. And I think this line needs to go a little bit higher, too, to give him that nice curve on his wing. And sometimes if you just put your hand down and shape the curve, don't put your pencil on the page, just move it. It gives you an idea of how you're going to draw it. So now I'm thinking curve needs to be like that, because that's... That's the motion I had. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to curve in a little bit and then back out and down. And butterflies have two wings on each side. So here's his bottom wing and his top wing. And he's got some on the other side too that we can just see peeking out from behind. Okay, so there's our wing. So again, kind of like a tilted triangle. Now we need to place his head. So his other wing comes in, there's at least that much space before his head starts. So starting here, let's make sure his neck is long enough that his other wing can come out of that. And it's kind of the same shape, only more upward. So same shape, but I'm going to move it out here and go more upward and give him a little bump in and down. And that's his wing that is behind him. So you want to make sure this line is nice and dark to separate his front wings from his back wing. Okay, and now for his head, it's kind of an oval. So we're going to make an oval really lightly. Then come down a little, little diagonally for his body and then kind of hook it underneath his wing. There we go. So now we can get rid of our circle that we used to place him. And we have got a pretty good start on our butterfly. Bob's looking good. Let's go ahead and give him his face. He's got an eye. It's kind of high up on his head. And he's got two antenna off the top of his head. They're a little bit wiggly. Like that. He's got six legs. And he's got a lot of details on his wing. And remember, there were similar details 
on the real butterfly's wings too, like these ribs that run down like this. See how they do the same thing on the real butterfly? So that's kind of cool. So we want to put these details in. They're kind of the little veins in the wings, I think. So there's a sideways teardrop here, almost like a carrot, right? Like a chubby carrot. And then all these lines feed into it. So let's start out making this. And we're going to draw it lightly because see how it gets a little bit angular down here? It's not quite rounded. Um, so in order to do that, we'd have to erase a little bit on this. But you're going to want it to be light anyways because these veins are very delicate and light. So kind of make a sideways raindrop kind of carrot shape. Mine went a little wide there, so I'm going to fix that like that. There we go. And then there's one kind of in the middle going down. There's two more on the end like that. Then there's three on top. One, two, three and three on bottom. One, this one curves the other way, two, three. Then if I want to get these angles in, that kind of starts down here. So you might erase this end. And from here, instead of making a curved line, go straight, and then straight, and then straight, straight, straight. So it makes it a little bit more angular. On the top wing, the veins all start real close together and then they get farther apart. So we'll start up at the top, start near the edge, but get farther from the edge and draw it lightly because these are just real delicate lines. Close and they get farther, close and they get farther, and so on till we have the top wing done. And the far away wing has a couple of veins going down too. So here's one, two, there we go. Okay, there's a spot right here, and it's dark in the middle, and it has kind of a halo of lighter gray, lighter brown around it. And then there's two down here, and they're kind of a little bit fuzzy looking. So one, and then another one that's a little bit bigger down there. And there we go, we've got Bob. Now to make Otto, I'm gonna turn to the page where they're talking to each other. And I like this distance to the ground, that's kind of nice. And here's a good picture of Otto right here. So first we need to put the grass in. So you can either draw lines like this, or you can kind of do zigzaggy grass. It's whatever you feel like. Kind of go randomly different directions. Give a grass line. And then we're gonna have Otto coming out. Um, and he's, he is curved diagonally. His head is a little bit wider than his body. He's got one eye kind of high up on his face, and then he's got a few little marks down here that kind of show you the ribbing on a worm. So there you go. There is Bob and Otto. Now you might want to color these in, and if you do want to, I'll kind of, I thought I'd go over that too, since we have the time and I have my pencils. I don't have the exact colors that the artist used, but that's okay. I'll use what I have. So I'm going to go back to the page that we were working on because that shows Bob really well. Here we go. So like I said, he's basically yellow with some gold accents on him, goldish brown, right? The real one that looks so similar, it's actually lavender. It's a light purple. So you could choose. You could use purple if you want, or you can use brown, brownish gold. But his wings are pretty much yellow, so... You can color those in really easily. It's a good place to start. And you take your time and do it nice and neat. You can always pause the video until you're done coloring in. I'm just gonna color in really fast and kind of sloppy so that you don't have to wait for me to color things in all the way. Okay, there we go. Then his his head and body, it's a little bit of an orangish color, kind of a goldy color, but similar to the yellow. So I'm gonna do that. And if you look at the drawing, there's actually some shading that's been done. They used browns to give him shading around the edge, even some shadows from the butterfly wings. So you can either get a brown and do that, or you can still use your pencil and just super lightly add some shading around his nose, the sun must be behind him, shining down. And on the front of his body, 
the bottom of his body, and even a little bit up here because of his wings. There you go. That gives him some shading. I've decided I'm going to use purple for this accent color on his wings um, instead of brown because I discovered that the real butterfly has a light purple. So you can just go around the edge. And if you look at this far edge, it's a little bit thicker than it is on the top. So I'm going to go come in more from the edge, make it a little bit of a thicker purple edge. And on the bottom one, it's pretty thick all the way around. So that's what I'm going to do. And it's kind of interesting because on these veins on the wings, they've got some fuzz coming in too. So from the edge, you can just come up the vein a little bit. And it's almost like they go zigzaggy across. So that's what I'm going to do, getting smaller and smaller, almost like a Christmas tree. And that kind of carries the color in a little bit. And that happens up here too. So I'm going to do that up here too. And on the back wing also. So it's going to be purple here, purple on the edge, and bring the color in like that. So there's Bob. He's looking pretty cool. If you look at Otto, he's basically pink, kind of a peachy pink. So you can color him kind of a peachy pink color. And his outline is actually kind of hot pink, which is neat. Let's see, I'm gonna get my hot pink and I'm gonna put that around him. It kind of makes him more exciting looking. Pops a little bit more. And you can put that on his little notches too. And then you have the green grass. So you can color each one individually, or you can just kind of, again, go kind of zigzaggy. You can color in all below them, or you can do something like this, which just kind of gives an idea that it's going to go on and on, like there's more grass out there. And then if you want to give it a blue sky, you can do that too. So it's kind of fun. Here's Bob and Otto. Now that you've drawn a butterfly, you can draw all sorts of butterflies. You could change it to like a monarch butterfly with the orange and black and white, or you could make up your own butterfly and put your own colors in it. So that's always fun. That's the great thing about art. You can change things because it's your own creation. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, and um, thank you for coming to the library. Bye.